am so excited to introduce you and your project to our audience, but I wanted you to share with us first just a little bit about yourself. Well, Buju Niji, the Marzig, Terry Wildman, Nindishnikaz. So what I said in Ojibwe was, hello, my friends who share this life together with me. My name is Terry Wildman. I was born and raised in Michigan. My ancestry includes Ojibwe from Ontario, Canada, Yaqui from Sonora, Mexico, as well as English, German, and Spaniard. I'm married to Darlene Wildman. I have five children, eight grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. My wife and I currently live in Maricopa, Arizona, on the traditional lands of the Pima and the Tohono O'odham. I am so impressed with your project, First Nations Version. It's incredibly important. Can you share with us a little bit about how you decided to pursue translating the New Testament? And also what's different about this translation is it's it's translating it into English, but from a Native American context. So explain for our audience what that means and what all went into this process. Sure. Well, back in, uh, I, I would say it was about 2002, 2003, I was living with my wife on the Hopi Indian Reservation in Northern Arizona. And I, I was there serving as a missionary. And um, uh, I was also at that time just reconnecting to my own native heritage um, because I was not raised in my native heritage. Like many of our native people have missed that part of our, our, our connection. So I knew I had that heritage from my, from my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side, Yaqui and Ojibwe. But um, I hadn't connected. So I was reconnecting and living on a traditional, among a traditional people, the Hopi. They're very traditional still. Um, was such a learning pro- process for me. And while I was there, um, I, uh, in pastoring a church, say about 2003, I found a Hopi Bible uh, that was in a storage box, a, a bunch of Bibles, on a storage box in the church storage room we weren't using the Hopi Bible that was translated into the Hopi language. So I got it out. I was excited. And I began to ask around, uh, why aren't we using this? And I found out that the reason we weren't using it is no one could read it. And it really was a wake up call to me. And I just began to do some research and try to figure out what's going on. And I found out that this was true across the board with so many, um, with, you know, over 250 Uh, distinct languages that we have in North America. This same thing was happening everywhere. Less than 10% of our people can actually read their language, you know, uh, in their, uh, read the translations that have been made in their language. And so I I began to think, um, well, having Bible studies and in the uh, among the Hopi, with some of the men, I would have small uh, Bible studies in circles. We'd sit in a talking circle, and I began to learn that they weren't relating well with the, just the standard NIV translation. And I wondered what was going on, and so I just began to experiment with this idea of rewording in English, since our people are now talking English, rewording it in English so it would relate to our native people. And so I started that experimenting with that. And it began to to open up conversations. It began to help this whole process of of uh, of being able to uh, look at the Bible and 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 have the the uh, Hopi men and women who are involved in that really begin to engage with it because it was using wording they could relate to. So so we just uh, I just began to experiment with this. Now I had no idea. Uh, that I was going to become a Bible, translate the Bible. You know, it was just, I mean, that wasn't on my, my mind. I just thought, let's, let's just begin to uh, reword the scripture and, 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 and use portions of it. And, and my wife and I decided to, to do this story. We re- rewrote a very short story of creation to Christ. We called it the great story from the sacred book. And since we're recording artists, We actually um, were able to record this onto a CD and we submitted it to the uh, uh, 
Native American Music Awards, and it actually won Best Spoken Word. And so that was the beginning of, of, of using a form of English that uses words from the scriptures that relate to our Native people. Eventually, as my wife and I traveled more and did more ministry, uh, we were on the road for many years, I began to experiment with, with translating my favorite portions of scripture into this kind of new vernacular, right? And then I used it as we would travel. My, my wife would play her flute. We, we would do our songs. And then uh, I would read portions of it uh, to uh, at, sometimes uh, at native churches on reservations in different places. And people would come up to me and say, native people with native elders. And they would say, you're saying it in English the way we think it in our language. And they would say things like, what Bible were you reading from? And I would say, well, I'm not. I'm just, I've just reworded some, some of my favorite scriptures. I don't, there's not a Bible like this as far as I know. And they got, they got upset. <laughs> they said, there should be a Bible like this. And so I just began to hear that more and more. And um, I began to, I researched, I, I searched everywhere with mission organizations. And eventually, uh, in about 2012, um, it became clear to me that no one was doing this. And other people began to encourage me, maybe, maybe Creator is calling you to do this. And that seemed like, oh, no way. You know, how could I do that? Too big. And, and um, but I made the commitment and that was the amazing part of it is once I made the commitment in my heart to do this, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I felt like Abraham going to a strange land where I've never been before, you know, <laughs> a stranger in a strange land of Bible translation. But uh, Creator began to provide uh, finances and uh, we published two um, after we did the, the CD that won the Native American Music Award, then we published a, a short story of the birth of Jesus using this wording. And then we published another book, self-published, called When the Great Spirit Walked Among Us. And that was the, the four gospels in one story, a harmony. And then in 2015, I, I really dedicated myself okay, I'm starting the project. I had built a website. I had a Facebook page, you know, and I was going to go to work. I had friends that were working with me a little bit and helping me with, with wording. A lot of my native friends uh, I, I had made. But then on, um, on I'll, I'll say this real quick, April 1st, 2015, um, which is April Fool's Day. And on April 1st, 2015, I got an email from one book, of Canada, a Bible translation organization. And the CEO, uh, Wayne Johnson, said, I like what I found about you on the internet. You're doing this translation. That looks like a really good idea. How would you like to talk about us coming behind you to support you in this process? And I, th I just, I couldn't believe it. I, is this a joke? It was April Fool's Day, but he was serious. And it wasn't long, and we we uh, partnered, our ministry, Rain Ministries, partnered with One Book of Canada, and began the process of of translating the New Testament. And they got behind us to give us credibility and all those things. That's believe it or not, the story's a little longer, but that's the short version. 